Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. Let's start 4-3, but wait, I got a shard on there. That's because I made a mistake and did not push the button in all the way on the camera that records my voice, so I had to restart this. <laughs> but that's okay, I, I noticed it early on so it's no big deal. Anyway, for this one you're going to need a needle plus stone power later on, so combine them and get yourself a drill! Holding the button you'll get this, you know, it, it kind of pulls you along on its own like that. And it also has wall penetrating abilities, and you can also shoot it like a projectile. It's got a very long range, but as you can see it doesn't have the power a lot of the items have that we've already seen, but it's still a great power. Oh, these are the Mario enemies that if you try to inhale them, they'll actually damage you. Oh, and don't worry, I'll show you where that uh, shard that I missed was anyway. Because remember, I told you before that if you ever miss... I mean, if you ever get a shard in the stage, it will be replaced by a blue star, and... Oh man, I wasn't able to dodge Rocky! <laughs> I thought I could just, like, run underneath him. That's too bad. It's too bad. See that? That's where the shard once was, and that's where you need the rock plus needle power to break that block right... Come on. <laughs> to break that block right there and get yourself that shard and there you go so that's the first shard and now we can move on because i know i'm recording my voice this time <laughs> don't you just hate when that happens and maybe this power is pretty broke after all and enemies just jump right into it at least in certain areas like that and as you can see the environment is a rocky abstract mountain area which i think is pretty neat and oh jeez, why did i run into that it's pretty neat in my opinion because you got all sorts of different colors and it, it, it does have a mountainous feel but it's still got the Kirby-like feel to it as well and I think it's a very, very cool area. And I'm just going to just run through everything and by the way you can tell that there's pits and stuff down here and I think actually this is the level that has a shard in a pit somewhere but I think I might be able to see it once I approach it and I should probably get that sandwich. I'm, I'm kind of ignoring food, and I shouldn't be doing that, especially when I'm playing as reckless as I am right now. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just move on, and I think this is actually the spot where there's a shard down one of these pits. And, oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. If you're near an edge, uh, let's see if I can do it. Well, I can't seem to do it on command, but Kirby will pull himself up, <laughs> up the edge, like that. There we go. So you can kind of use that to your advantage uh, if you run out of your floaty juice, so to speak. You know, if you can't fly anymore because you got tired out. And, hmm. Man, I hope I didn't... Come on, guys. Why am I having so much trouble with you of all critters? <laughs> oh, this. Okay, there's... There's going to be a bunch of blocks in the next screen here. And you've got to shape them into whatever picture Adeline here makes. There's three different combinations. There's a top hat, an umbrella, and a pizza. I'm going to go over to the next screen and show you what I mean here. There is, there's a blank spot in the center there. And that one, that one counts as a block, so consider that a block. So, since I have to do an umbrella... I will show you what the other two are like. So first, the top hat. And then the pizza. Now since I have to make the umbrella, I will show you that firsthand. This is going to take me a little while here. And be very careful not to destroy more blocks than are necessary. Just destroy them like that. And I should probably get rid of this. Uh, boop. Boop. Carefully. Carve out this corner like that. And then these. They'll be safe. And then once you finish... Come on. In the center, the shard will appear. That'll be the same whether you have the top hat or pizza as well. So, there you go. Let's move on, shall we? And we are coming up to a neat little rock formation here. And you don't give me any powers. But you give me powers, so I don't think 
This would be a very useful power on a mountain. These platforms fall, so you gotta look out for that. Uh, those ones that are floating in midair like that, you give me the cutter power, which I think will be much more, much more useful, unless, you know, I don't hit the button early enough. <laughs> uh, I think this is the area that has the shard down the pit, but then again, I've said that like three times already, so what do I know? Uh, anyway, go for falling death platforms. Uh, these little alcoves contain stuff if you want to get them, I suppose. I probably should, because I am playing so reckless I'm ending up losing a lot of energy here. Kill that critter. It's very much in my way, and I gotta recover some health. And you can't really... I thought you could pull yourself through these platforms. Oh, you can, but not when you're using the cutter power. Okay. So I wasn't mistaken there. Is this... Yeah, that's the one that has the shard. Okay. It's marked by that star. I remembered it instantly when I seen it. Because I remember, I remember that star was the uh, indicator of that. Just so I knocked that platform down for the heck of it. Since I'm knocking down all of them on my way here anyway. And it says K I I R B Y. What's that spell? What's that spell? No, really, what's that spell? I, I can't really tell. <laughs> and it's the end of the level. Oh, I don't think I'm aligned properly with it. Nope, I am not. Well, I got some nummy nummy meat. And we are going over to the next level. As you can tell by the little thumbnail here, we've got ourselves a lava level. <sighs> this is awesome. <laughs> Just look at this thing, it's spectacular. And look out for the rocks, obviously. And lava as well. Uh, the lava isn't a one-hit kill, but it hurts. So, just thought I would make a mention of that. I believe you're gonna need a rather odd power combination here. I'm actually not sure if it's in this level. You need two ice enemies to get a shard in this place. And I'm just gonna do this and get myself a fire sword for the fun of it. It's a little bit more versatile. And look out for those birds. They chuck stuff down on your head. Uh, oh boy. Potoboos! No, why are you here? And oh, by the way, that, that sword has the effect of... Oh jeez. It has the effect of actually hurting enemies that just run into it, so it's pretty neat when you got stuff that's around you and you can just like switch sides like that and you'll kill enemies outright. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's it's like an, a different way to control the power, like rather than using the B button to use them, you can simply turn around and there you go. And you know, I really think I'm not gonna be able to get an ice enemy by the time I get to the spot, but that's okay. Uh, I did find something else out though, that uh, it doesn't really matter if you finish a stage or not when you get a crystal shard, because it, it clearly saved, as you've seen when I, you know, didn't have my uh, camera recording my voice on, in that you can just collect the shard and then just leave the level by going to, by pausing the game and then clicking try again. King DDD portion! Let's go! Yeah, we got him as a buddy. And you can also hit enemies behind you with the hammer, and you can also... Um, that was terrible playing. You can also charge your hammer, like holding the button like that, by, by the B button, and you'll be able to break these in one hit. Otherwise, it takes a couple of hits to get through these. I didn't show that before because there weren't any walls that warranted me having to use that. Like, it wasn't useful enough at the moment to... Uh, show it, and I didn't want to overcomplicate things and stuff like that. One of these has a shard, so I am going to be looking out for that. Uh, it's in it's in one of the upper halves of those pillars that I'm breaking through. And DDD here has a large hitbox, but great. But the uh, platforms, he seems to be able to stand on them pretty easily. Like he doesn't get pushed off the platforms when he touches the edge despite that large area just like he he seems to cling to the surface pretty well so you don't have to worry about those jumps being too tricky for you or something like that and you can you can actually stand on that little surface there despite it being glowing hot ah there's the shard 
That's the first one, and I totally flubbed that jump, but that's okay, because this area is still very awesome. What? I can't break that, really? It, it, that's totally breakable, come on. <sighs> Fine, beat that way. And you're going to be terribly in my way. I guess I'm just going to have to hammer you in the air. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any ice enemies. And watch this. <laughs> just chucks you out in the next room. Yeah, I mean, this is a volcano level after all, so it makes sense that there wouldn't be any ice enemies. Though it's kind of, uh... Um... Kind of sad that there isn't, because I need a double ice enemy to do this a little bit later. Ah, that's the one I was looking for. Now I can just fly through everything. Well, most of everything. I just figured I would combine those and have some fun. With pitch here. And look at that beautiful background. As volatile as this place looks, it still retains a lot of beauty to it. This game has a lot of artistic design, actually, and you notice that I'm pretty much invulnerable to everything. That's why I was able to just flop right into that electrical field Sparky there was making. And Brontal Bird here, yeah, he can he can run into me all he wants to. It's it's not gonna happen. I mean, it's I mean he can try, but it's not gonna hurt me. And yeah, you can tell when you're a pitch here, you got a lot of mobility and you are pretty versatile. Um, you can't. Yeah, you can't do that, though, with Pitch. So I just thought I would show you that. See, the lava still hurts you regardless, because it is an env environmental hazard. And... Jeez. Oh, <laughs> I should probably get myself... Well, I'm, wait, I'm actually right at the end of the area. Forget about it. I thought there was a little more to go. Here's what you need the ice power for. And it's not obvious, either. This was another one that got me when I was a kid. Because it, it makes it seem like, with the coloration, that you need... Um, burning plus rock or burning plus bomb, and that's not it. You actually need double ice power to get that. It's in that cent center little volcanic shape thing in the center there. And I want Pitch to save myself some grief with this very broken power once you get the right critter. Eh. Why must it be terribly randomized? <laughs> no! <laughs> How many times have I tried already? Uh, that is far too slow, by the way. You got another bird critter, but he's far too slow to do anything about... to do things, I mean. Uh, there we go! Now I'm going to have a much easier time. Oh, and then a cutscene cracks me out of my power. So yeah, we got the volcano starting to erupt here, and we got to escape! Oh no! It's a really, really slow lava flow, so you don't have to worry too much about that. I would try for the pitch power again, but let's face it, my luck is pretty bad today. <laughs> so I think I'm going to hold off on that, and... Just break stuff with the power as I go, like normally, and not aim for pitch, unless I accidentally... Alright, I should say I somehow get lucky enough to get pitch. And then I'll be able to get through the stage by flying through the majority of it. And... Oh boy. Trying to trick me, huh? By putting enemies below me and above me. Oh, it's not going to happen. And Sandman here is really in the way. Uh, this is kind of, I mean, it looks treacherous, but it's really not, because you got, you know, your floating jump, and it's just not an issue whatsoever, because you can control your landing and whatnot. And now the volcano is erupting upwards, as you can see the lava coming up from below. Oh boy! Continue upwards, Kirby! We can do it! We can't do it! Okay, we can still do it. <laughs> I just want to show you the area as I go. It's It goes so slow that I should be able to show you the whole area. Like, there's a shard over here, but I, I want to show uh, everything if I can. And... Maybe I can. Maybe it's going faster than I thought it was, but it doesn't really matter because I can float right through everything. Oh, man, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Actually, it's not going to be close whatsoever. <laughs> just... 
bop your head on the blocks. That's the fastest way to get through a formation like that. And we are safe! The volcano erupts in the background, and I overshot the car, and I was pointing into the right direction, too. Oh, no, no, no. No. Well, I gotta get myself some ice powers. I'm here in 1-2 once again, because this is definitely the best level to get powers in, and because I know for sure this guy is here, and... This other guy is here. You killed him! How could you do it? How could you do such a thing? That's what the ice power does on its own, by the way, is that it, you can yeah, freeze stuff like that. And you should be respawned by now, right? Yeah. Don't don't throw it when he's doing his little blizzard attack there, Frosty. And there we go. I'll see you back at the other level. You know, I should probably show you what this snow power is like. You know, the double snow here. It basically turns you into a snowball that explodes on contact with walls, but it actually collects enemies inside the snow like that, and as it fills up, it'll actually shoot the enemies out, and I believe they can hit other targets, though it's not all that often that it happens. You can also trigger the explosion by pressing the B button. It's a pretty neat power, I have to say. Oh, uh, by the way, those, uh, bird en those bird enemies that I mentioned before, they're known as burnesses. Like Burnus, and I just put Isses at the end because you know there's two, you know, plural. And then there's a later version of them called Phrygis. It's an ice version of the bird like that. And I'm gonna collect a lot of enemies in this little. Oh, I fell in a hole. Dang trap holes. Duh. Maybe I can collect a bunch of Bronto birds along the way here. Oh yeah, perfectly timed. And explode them. <laughs> By the way, you can tell whenever you'll see a Potoboo down in the lava like that. Yes, I know they're not Potoboos, I'm just joking around about that. Whenever you see, like, fire in the lava itself, like, you see that little... that flame that's at the top of the lava, like, all the lava to the left there is flat, but to the right of me, that lava has a little flame in it coming out of it. Yeah, that's how you can tell when one is going to pop out of it. And yeah, I'm nearing the area, so I'm wondering if I should just cut, or if I should... No, wait, I'm right here. Again, I I, under, I mean, I overestimated how long this area was. So, okay, we got the double ice. There it is, and as you can tell, it's on some lava, so be careful in grabbing that. There's the shard, and as I said before, you don't actually have to beat the level in order for this shard to get in your inventory like I thought before. There it is, right on your uh, um, checklist of sorts. So, my mistake on that. So anyway, I'm going to end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part.